Hi, my name is Brandon Marks, and today I'm going to be spilling the tea. In other words, I'm going to be attempting to answer questions and situating my answers within a realm of theory and pop culture and seeing how I can blend those together to make these answers more accessible to a wider audience. So, I asked on my Facebook for people to respond anonymously to a question simply, what do you have to ask about uh, women, gender, and the body? Then I got a lot of great responses, and one in particular I'd like to talk about in relation to this class and also in relation to pop culture and um, my experiences with my trans friends um, overall. So the first question is, I hear so many men say they feel tricked or cheated when a transgender passing woman reveals male genitalia prior to intercourse. How can I explain why that shouldn't matter? So thankfully, or firstly, thank you so much for your question, and thankfully this question is at least somewhat answerable and contestable, so we can get right into it. So before I start, I'd like to foreground some of the concepts and words that are highlighted in this question and what I'll be talking about as well. So what's the difference between cis and trans? So cis can stand for cisgender, which means someone who is comfortable in their gender and is aligned with the sex assigned to them at birth. Transgender means someone whose gender does not align with the gender or sex assigned to them at birth. So when I talk about gender and sex, I talk about them in a conflated way. And that's not by my own choice, but by the way in which our society, specifically Western society and in the United States, um, assigns someone a gender based on their genitalia or sex at birth, even before they're born. So think about even stuff like baby showers, how even before kids are born, they're assigned a gender and a sex, pink or blue. It's a binary, as are most of the problematic aspects of gender and sexuality in the United States. And in Karen A. Martin's piece, Becoming a Gendered Body, Practices of Preschools, she talks about in the realm of school how children become gendered and as you grow older, your sex and your gender become conflated. But moving beyond that, children whose gender is assigned to them at birth, and even when it's a binary, you can only go one way or the other, and you have to maintain that binary in order to survive. And sticking on one side of it, you fill a role. So that's really important to talk about as well. So kind of the conflation of gender and sex and how those relate. Uh, another thing that I'd like to talk about and problematize is the concept of male genitalia. So the question asks or says passing women revealing male genitalia. So this is still a great question, but using the term male genitalia is again something that reinforces a binary and denies trans women the ability to exist in the body given to them at birth. So there's, not some, there's nothing inherently wrong with existing in your body. And many trans women say they feel dysphoria or discomfort with the body given to them and wanting to transition and incorporate different uh, body types or transitioning toward a newer, fuller body that represents their womanhood. Um, that's something that's important to them. So utilizing the term male genitalia can be kind of problematic because many trans women say, okay, like, I have male genitalia, therefore I need to do something about it. Whereas if we flip the question and say, um, if your genitalia is just your genitalia, then it's not a big deal. And it doesn't define you as a sexual being, and it doesn't define the sexual um, sexuality of people who are involved with you. So some people's genitalia is just their genitalia, and some trans women have penises, um, some trans men have vaginas, and some people are intersex, and that even complicates the gender assigned to people at birth when their sexual characteristics don't really match up with a binary. And then going back to that, there's an article on Vice called The Straight Men Who Have Sex With Trans Women. So the subheader is wanting to have sex with trans women is not synonymous with undoing the stigma against loving them. So, and that's even, that's complicated. But getting back to your point, men feel, say they feel tricked or cheated. And that kind of relates to the concepts of heteronormativity 
and um, hegemonic masculinity. So hegemonic masculinity is a concept that states, okay, you have to be cisgender, you have to be straight, and you have to be involved with a woman. And out of that relationship with a woman, you have to get married, you have to have kids to confirm all this. And that really relates to capitalist modes of consumption and just kind of this dominant patriarchal ideal that states that men have to be a certain way and women have to be a certain way. And that's how you get things like the binary, um, both gender and sexuality. And um, heteronormativity, again, going off hegemonic masculinity states, everyone's straight, right? Everybody's straight. And you have to be, or else you won't survive. And that is where trans women's identities become complicated um, when they're attracted to men, but also trans, women, I, trans women's and trans men's identities in general, um, specifically relating it to trans women um, sexually or gender-wise, they're often seen as like incompetent men or really effeminate gay men or people who are men who are out to attack other people. And that's simply not true. Um, if a trans woman states that she's a trans woman and that she's female, and that she's a woman, she's a woman. The same thing for a uh, trans man. If you say you're a man, like you are a man. And everyone has dysphoria, including cis people who are sometimes not comfortable with their gender because like everyone else, um, everyone's pressured into performing for the binary. And this is really interesting because if you're a straight man who's attracted to a woman, you're still straight. If you're a bi man who's attracted to a trans woman, you're still bi. You're not gay. And penis doesn't equal gay. Um, and similarly, not all trans women have penises. Um, if a trans woman has elected to have genital surgery, uh, gender confirmation surgery, there you go. But the fact that trans women are pressured into doing surgeries um, that they might not want to have just because they want to pass is something that pressures them into performing for the binary and something that can make them seem like a trickster or a willful subject in their own, um, their own violence that's perpetrated against them. So relating that back, one quote from the Refinery article, Refinery29 article, what it's really like to be a trans woman states, I don't think of passing as a privilege, it's a means of survival. And that's by Rashida Renee, a black trans woman who's from California, and black trans women predominantly more than anyone else in the LGBTQ community face violence from um, intimate partners and other people. So one story that's particularly disturbing but interesting and necessary to talk about is the story of Zella Ziona, who was killed this year. Um, she was 21 years old and she was from Maryland. One of her friends allegedly shot her to death after she, quote, began acting flamboyantly um, around him and his friends. So she wasn't necessarily tricking anyone, but she was being a spectacle. So again, trans women have this bind of fitting in this binary. Do they become hyper-feminine and hyper-characteristic of femininity and perform in every single way? Or do they simply cease to exist and become quiet? So what's disturbing and also important is the fact that he allegedly shot her in the head and the groin. So the most feminine aspect of her, her face, something that allowed her to pass, was mutilated. And so were her genitals. And it doesn't state, and it shouldn't really state, whether or not she was pre or post-op. That doesn't matter. But the fact that he did that to her is important to note because he's literally and symbolically destroying the things that trans women are so vilified for. And that relates to Sarah Ahmed's piece, The Performativity of Disgust, in which she quotes, let me get it. Oh yeah, it is not the object, we can see object as trans woman, it is not the object apart from the body, has the quality of being offensive, but the proximity of the object to the body is felt as offensive. The object must have got close enough to make us feel disgusted. As a result, while disgust takes over the body, it also takes over the object that apparently gave rise to it. 
So this literally relates, relates to sexual intimacy and intercourse. So a trans woman who has sex with a man, presumably a straight man, because straight men have sex with women, that's just kind of how it goes together, um, the object or the trans woman becomes willful in eliciting violence against her because she makes the straight man realize, wow, I'm having sex with X or Y, and wow, I really need to think about the fact that people will see me a certain way because I'm not performing heteronormativity in a way that I should be. And so trans women shouldn't be blamed for tricking or cheating men because one, not all trans women are straight, um, and not all trans women who are with men necessarily can reveal that they're trans early on because they will face violence. So it's kind of a catch-22. Do you reveal yourself as trans and face violence, or do you not, and then receive violence later on? It's kind of inescapable. And some trans people don't want to be feminine. Some trans people don't want to be sexualized at all, and that's really important to note. So you can explain why it shouldn't matter because making it a topic of discussion and saying that, okay, trans women have to pass, elides the fact that they're receiving violence from people who are actively doing that against them. So I really hope that answered your question, and if you have any questions about my answer. Let's engage in a dialogue and have some tea together. Thank you so much.